Hello, scientists. How are you today? Yikes. It sounds like some of you are struggling right now. That could happen. I totally understand. But I'm hoping that our learning today will turn that around. Do you remember what question we're trying to answer? Yes. Why shouldn't we measure our temperature after being in the sun? Yesterday, we were able to measure the temperature of different items and a person before and after being in the sun. Do you know what I realized, though? I never told you what tool I was using to measure the temperature. Some of you already know, but this tool is called a thermometer. Let's say that again, thermometer. How many of you already knew the name for this tool? Oh, that's great. Quite a few, few of you already knew. A thermometer is used to measure what? Yes, thermometers measure the temperature of different objects. And the word thermometer literally means heat measurer. Thermo means heat, and meter means to measure. Huh, so convenient that that tool is named after what it does. Did you know that there are also different kinds of thermometers, too? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I brought some in for us to observe. Let's look at what I've got. So I have a couple of thermometers. I have the radar thermometer from yesterday. And this one, ah, I have two more from my house. This one is to take my temperature when I'm not feeling well. And this one is a meat thermometer. Is there, any, is there anything you notice about the different thermometers? Ooh, I think a scientist said it. One of these is really different from the others, right? Which one? The meat thermometer. Let's take a look at what's different about it. Ah. So these ones both had screens that display the numbers but the meat thermometer has a bunch of lines, a red arrow, and many numbers. It could be confusing to try to read it. Let's check it out a bit more. What temperature is it when I point here? What was that? You don't know how to read this kind of thermometer? Oh my goodness, I totally forgot to ask you before I started. I even have something prepared that will help us. Earlier, my friend drew an overly large thermometer. It obviously isn't a real one, but it's based after one that, the ones that use mercury. The mer mercury, which is usually red, rises up to the temperature of whatever is on this end. These, when used on people, are either slipped under the tongue or under your armpit. And the average healthy temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. These are also used to measure the temperature outside. They're usually hung up on walls outdoors, but can also be used indoors. Anyway, back to the meat thermometer. I drew lines on this thermometer that are similar to the meat ones, but did you notice something missing? Uh-huh, some of you did. There are no numbers on here, just short and long lines. Let's count and write the numbers. But let me tell you something first. We're only gonna write the numbers on the long lines. Can you imagine why we don't wanna write every single number in between the lines? Absolutely right. It'll get too crowded and hard to read. So let's count the lines and only write the number of the long lines. Count with me. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30. Oh, scientists, I don't know how many of you are in second grade, but I'm starting to see a number pattern here. We have the numbers 10, 20, 30, and they are evenly spaced by 10. Do you think we could just count by tens to finish making this thermometer? All right. Well, let's try it out. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. Wow, that was so much faster. I'm so glad I remember how second graders count. Now we could just focus on fi finishing it and then learning how to read it. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 
90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, and 150. Woo. Earlier I mentioned a temperature. Do you remember what I said? Great job. 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That's an average healthy temperature. Let me show you that on the thermometer. There. So we know what this is because, well, we know what it is because we already said it, but it's not numbered on here. So it can be easy to forget. What can we do to read this number on the thermometer? Hmm, some scientists said we can count, and I agree, we could, but that might take a long time. Let me show you a quick way to do it. All right, so I'm gonna go here. All right, do you see that? I started here, went to the closest 10, and I counted up. I wonder if I could count backwards, too. So I'm gonna go to the closest 10, 99, 98. <gasps> it works both ways. Huh, I just remembered something from my work training that we can test out. They said that the average fever runs at about 100.4. Let me get that thermometer ready. So 100.4. Ah, this one's so much easier to read. It's on the nearest 10, or in this case, the nearest 100. So it's really easy to find. Ooh, I think I have another one. Earlier, I looked up the average temperature in San Francisco during the month of April, and it said 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me set that up. Okay, so let's go to the nearest 10 and count up. 60, 61, 62, 63. Found it. <laughs> wow, that's actually pretty easy. Scientists, this skill is so helpful. We now know how to read a thermometer, and we know we don't have to count one by one to do it. <laughs> we're all out of time for today, but I really enjoyed learning with you. Tomorrow, we're going to learn how young scientists use their knowledge of thermometers and heat to make an app that helps people. I can't wait to see you then.